Hey Taurus, welcome to your tarot session. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we're gonna dive right into your reading. I missed you guys. I'm very happy to be here right now in this moment with you. I'm recording this early October. Um, you know, this is a weird season. I think that everyone's going through it. So of course, I invite you to be kind to yourself as much as possible. We are all navigating uncertainty. The, the astrology, the energies are so weird. It's not just you. You're not crazy. I think we're all feeling a little bit on edge right now. Um, so yeah, again, try to be nice to yourself. I was checking in, as I always do, you know. Uh, I, I didn't do a full-on meditation, but I was meditating on the energy and checking in. And I kept getting the word responsibilities, responsibilities. And I was like, why am I getting this? This is so annoying. <laughs> why am I hearing that? And what came up was that <sighs> there are some responsibilities that you are absorbing and they're not yours. And I think you're starting to move away from that a little bit, kind of figuring out, okay, that's not my job. That's not my responsibility. And maybe it feels kind of reassuring at first to do everything yourself, to not delegate, to make sure that the job is done and everything is well done. But I think that the responsibilities is kind of coming through with delegating, which it's coming up constantly for the Taurus Collective. So we'll see. We'll see. I just wanted to share that. And look at that. The lover's card is your general energy in the present moment. I'm kind of lost for words, to be honest. It feels special to pick this card right now. To me, this is a card of communication before anything, how you communicate your needs. Are you maybe sometimes waiting to be exhausted, to feel depleted, to finally say, I need a break? I need help. I need support. I feel like there's this expansion here finally being heard. Finally being able also to express certain things that probably were stuck, you know? Six is what comes after change. Five is the number of change. Six is to me a number of reciprocity of expansion finally seeing things changing um the other side really of change so you improved i would say for sure personally on certain things the way you talk to yourself the way you treat yourself Maybe you're noticing that sometimes you punish yourself when you're doing good or when you're not doing so good, either with the things that you consume or the things that you do in general. There's something here, a blockage that's dissolving and it feels really good. I, I could talk about the lover's card for hours, to be honest. This is the sacred mirror. It's Gemini energy. It's an invitation to open ourselves to multiple truths. You know, we talk a lot about the truth. What is my truth? What is this person's truth? You know, it's possible to believe multiple truths at once. I think that if we remain adaptable and flexible, which is the whole point of Libra season, I think it can be beneficial to open ourselves to multiple truths and not just obsessing over what is my truth, what is the truth. Okay. Ace of Wands is the first card out and right away the Devil card followed very close. So there is a new beginning here. Clearly, again, you have been through very, very personal change, very deep changes. And now... You're probably in this new beginning, but with the devil card, it feels like you're looking for something. You're looking for some type of external validation. Okay, what am I doing next? Um, do I have a goal? Do I have some type of 
material confirmation that I am on the right track. It feels like someone has been calling in their guides and asking, am I on the right track? I just need to know that I'm okay, that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be because I cannot see clearly what's coming next. So the first thing really is, again, you are already in this new beginning. And the devil card is here to remind us that we're doing enough. This is what's coming up right now. Because the devil card brings up so many lessons. It's one of the most powerful card in the tarot when it comes to soul medicine. It's a very feared energy. People are afraid of it because of old beliefs. Uh, and you know, when the tarot was created a very, very long time ago, of course, like people in a position of power benefited from people being scared of that card. Um, you know, a lot of structures and of course patriarchy and a lot of folks benefit from us being afraid sometimes of ourselves and of authority. The devil card is connected to authority. It's connected to Saturn and it feels with the ace of wands and especially with the lover's card that you're taking back control of a certain narrative. And I'm hearing instantly, so it's weird. It feels like there's this revelation coming up. Like, okay, I've been trying to make this other person happy for a decade now. I've been unconsciously trying to make my parents or caretakers happy or my boss or my friends, my partner. And then what's left for me? So this new beginning here. It really is about you identifying the chains of old belief. I would say identifying what's been anchoring you in the past, what's been keeping you kind of stuck in the past in certain areas of your life. And as you identify those things, you are more aware, again, of what is your role in that? how you communicate, how you stay attached to certain things, certain rules, rules that you create for yourself or rules that you've been following for a very long time. This is clearly, again, a new, a new beginning. I don't want to say a new era. I don't want to say a new cycle. It's just a different time for you very different time for you and page of swords is here so again it makes sense with what i just said taking back control of a certain narrative the way you communicate is so important right now again to remain adaptable and flexible you receive information are you reacting instantly can you notice the triggers that you're experiencing? Can you identify where in your body certain things feel weird when you're dealing with family and friends and work? With the Page of Swords, this is a hero energy. This is the card, and I always felt that way, that prepares us for any tower moments. Anytime I pick the Page of Swords for myself, I know that I can kind of calm down a little bit. Okay, you are in control, babe. It's like, I, I want to say this to myself. It's like, you're in control, babe. No matter what happens, you've been through worse than this. You are a survivor. And you will come out of any tricky situation victorious. Even stronger, especially mentally. Here, with the Lover's card and the Page of Swords, there's something that's changing, you know, in your mental, in kind of how your brain is programmed to stress you out around certain things and to maybe isolate you sometimes because of what you're feeling, what you're thinking. Very interesting uh, beginning of a session. Again, I, I feel like there are very... Deep, deep changes happening. Yeah, look at that. It's, it's mental, my friend. 
And at the heart of the reading, of course, the Justice card is, is here. Again, we are in Libra season. Libra is ruled by Venus just like you. It is such an important season for Taurus, but it's not easy. It's not easy to remain adaptable and flexible. It really isn't. We are, a f we are fixed. Taurus is fixed Earth. It's the most fixed of the fixed signs. Um, Earth, it, it stays there. We know how to root ideas. We know how to get comfortable. We know how to make everyone else feel comfortable. But there's something here that I feel in the recent past kind of triggered you very profoundly, Taurus. And I think that there's a lot of residual energy around that. Again, in the month of October, it's... What's on the other side of that change? What's on the other side of this challenge? And the Ace of Swords is here with the Ace of Wands. So again, a lot of changes when it comes to the way you perceive things, the way you absorb things. And I'm, I'm seeing 11-11 on the timer as I'm holding the 11th card, the Justice card. So... And we have one, one here. So there could be something about 11, 11. I love angel numbers. Anytime I see, especially 11, 11, I know that it's a moment to just take a deep breath. And I always ask uh, my guides, what would you have me know? This is what I do. A, a lot of folks ask me like, what do you do when you see angel numbers? I feel like my mom texts me all the time and asks me that. And I always ask, what would you have me know in this moment? It's just an invitation to stay present and to, again, take a deep breath. So just discard at the heart of it all. There is something here about, again, responsibilities, which is what I felt before starting this session. I would invite you to maybe journal about that, if that's your thing, Taurus. If not, maybe just ask yourself that question, meditate on it a little bit, have a conversation with someone you feel safe around. What are the responsibilities that you kind of absorb that are not yours? It's not your job, but you just, there's the illusion of feeling so much better when everyone around you is doing good, everyone around you is comfortable, everyone around you has, you know, enough to eat and enough to drink, you know, that type of energy. You have a visitor, let's say, and you're just constantly making sure they're okay, but you're not sitting down and actually enjoying the conversation. That's that type of energy I'm sensing. You're trying to keep yourself busy right now because I think it's very uncomfortable to stay still and be present because there's so much uncertainty with what comes next. Right now, this card says, are you listening? Are you present at the dinner table? You know, the metaphorical dinner table. Are you listening? When someone is speaking to you, are you in a rush? Are you constantly on your cell phone? It feels like your nervous system is going through some type of reboot here. And it's okay. I don't think it's comfortable necessarily or easy, but I think it's okay. It's part of this whole process. And when October ends, And I'm hearing 11, 11, 11. So October 11 could be a very important date for you. It's like there's something on the other side of that date. There's something on the other side of the month of October, like mid-October. And there's the material uh, confirmation. There's something really changing externally. And it confirms that you're on the right track. You will get your confirmation. But until then, I think we all have to stop looking for answers outside of ourselves. I think we need to look within. And it's easier said than done, my friend. Easier said than done. I hear so many people 
um, you know, and all loved them, but, you know, especially friends sometimes who are like, I'm really taking time for myself and I'm really trying to, you know, stay present and grounded. And they're just constantly scrolling on their phones, constantly. And they're available. You can reach them 24 seven, but it's like, are you really taking the time for yourself? Not just soul and body, but also again, your mind. I think this is the priority for you. Knight of Pentacles is here, of course. Like, how are you moving in the world? What is your belief and, and kind of relationship with the idea of moving slow? A lot of Taurus, you know, myself included, we get triggered a lot when people call us slow because we are known to be quote unquote slow in the Zodiac, like the, a slower moving energy. And then people are like, yeah, well, slow and steady wins the race. And that's cool. But actually to practice that is very freaking triggering sometimes. I'm a Taurus sun and I love change. I My sun, moon, rising, all fixed sign. And I know a lot of you know that already, but I love change, even if there's so much fixed energy in my chart. So... I give a lot of value to like big changes and um, fast changes. But at the end of the day, a lot of the times I notice like when things are changing very, very fast, I can look back and say, oh, okay, now I kind of changed my mind. Or, okay, now I understand why I needed to take my time with this. So this is what's coming up again mid-month. There's this realization here with the Knight of Pentacles of, okay, that's why things have been moving so slowly for me. That's why I was supposed to take my time. I was supposed to be present. So you're preparing for something. You're kind of getting ready for big change, more change. And again, I know you've been through a lot of changes especially internal, but now I think that the external wants to kind of match up what, what's been happening within. I'm hearing who inspires you. I don't know why it's important, but who inspires you? Is there someone you're looking up to, Taurus, right now? And you're like, wow, I love what they're doing. I love their energy. I wish I was more like this person. And it's not about necessarily comparing. It feels like there is someone in your energy. Someone that you have access to that inspires you and I think it's a good thing. I don't know why I'm being called to share this message. The lover's card is the sacred mirror, of course. And I think that there's this um, person that works like a mirror in your life. And I think it's a good thing. Again, it's not about comparing. There's no competition here. It's a very lovely energy that I'm sensing. Um, it could be another Venus ruled person or another earth sign. Also an air sign. It could be anyone, but there's just, it feels like your guides are saying it's okay to be inspired by that person. It's okay to be inspired by someone who, hmm. I'm hearing the Empress. It's so weird. And I'm, now I'm just seeing the candle. And the Emperor is here. This is very interesting. You know, the Emperor is always looking for the Empress. They work together. It's the yin and the yang. It's Mars and Venus. They work together. There's something here. And I don't know if it's a new connection or if it's like new feeling. New feelings are coming up to the surface around someone. Again, that is in your space. You are inspired by them, but I think this is the kind of the blockages I was feeling here. They're also inspired by you. There's this lovely mirroring that's happening. Um, 
it's interesting. I don't feel like it's necessarily romantic. I feel like it's true love, like wanting to be there for someone, loving their presence. Um, for some reason, your guides are kind of showing that to me. So, okay, now I said what I wanted to say. There was like this message coming in. The Empress here, this is another card of new beginning. So look, we have the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Swords, and the Emperor, which is connected to Aries, the first sign of the Zodiac. There's a lot of one, like one, 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 eleven, eleven. There's something here around that for you, Taurus. Notice when you see it. Again, I invite you to ask your guys just what would you have me know when you see 1111 on the clock and see what comes up. Sometimes it's going to be a feeling in your body. Um, it could be a light, a light kind of flickering, something with uh, fire energy, electricity. There's something here. Um, the emperor is always saying there's a place for you somewhere. So it's a confirmation for me as a reader of what I was sensing. You're about to find out exactly why things have been moving so slow, why you felt certain blockages in certain areas of your life because something wanted you to move slow because things are gonna be changing very fast. And the judgment card is right here. Judgment card. Oops, sorry, fell on the floor. It's the judgment card, you know, it's the crossroad. It's, I feel like traditionally we all know this card is the crossroad, but it's a divine intervention, really. When we realize, okay, that was meant to be, that was supposed to happen that way. And look what came next. Another Libra card. The Three of Swords, and I think they're all connected. So there's going to be, with the Three of Swords, a difficult conversation coming up for you, probably at the end of the month of October. A very important conversation that helps you heal something, helps you take the sword, the swords out of the heart, and heal something properly. And again, I feel like this healing is connected to your past. Because I said this earlier, I was like, uh, the question came up, like, what's been kind of anchoring you to the past? I don't even know if you can say that in English. It came up that way, but it feels like something was constantly pulling you back. Um, kind of the energy, and I'm going to be careful with that word, but kind of the energy of a curse. You know, when you're like, why am I constantly thinking about this? Sometimes I don't think about it and then it comes up and then I feel weird and I feel like there's this blockage here around my heart space. Um, there's something that's been pulling you back. And I don't know, but it, I'm not sure, but it could be someone that's manifesting you, Taurus. You know, people sometimes they, well, they call this manifestation, but it's actually manipulation. You're not supposed to try to call in someone. You're not supposed to try to manipulate another person's energy. That's not manifestation. It's very unfair. It's very unhealthy. I would even say toxic. I think there could be someone that's trying to pull you in. They're not making the first move, but they want to have a conversation with you, even if they know that it might end up kind of in a dramatic way. Um, again, it, it feels like a curse, like um, not a curse, like a spell, like someone put a spell on you. And there's this loop. It's like someone is stuck in a loop. They're stuck in this past energy. And some days everything feels blurry. You're like, it feels like I'm living in a dream today. I feel like I'm not pr as present as I would want to. I feel the lack of energy. Yeah, because someone's pulling you in constantly. You're about to figure out who this person is because they will show up. And I don't know how this is happening. Again, it feels like there's this crossroad energy, this moment of, okay, this is where I'm supposed to be. That I said a bunch of time in this reading. I really feel like this is one of the bigger message today. 
But there, on this new path, this person comes back. This person sends a message and it feels a little triggering, but you're going to receive the answers you've been looking for. And I think that the bigger answer here is, yeah, this person has been pulling me in. This person has been manifesting me and it's not healthy. And that could be a great teacher for you, Taurus, especially around, again, manifestation. Um, and it's very important for me because I said this a lot of times here. I don't really manifest. I welcome whatever wants to find me because, again, I think that there are so many misconceptions about manifestation. Like people saying, I'm going to manifest my boss giving me a, ra a raise. You're actually manipulating the energy. You're trying to manipulate your boss's energy here. So, again, it's not healthy. And I think that that has been following you for a few years now. For some of you, it's the past, it's since 2020. There is this person I feel that was very present in your life, maybe in 2020, 2021. For some of you, it could be before that. But again, the tarot is gently inviting you to stay present. Again, to not absorb the communication, to listen, because there are information that you need to receive from this person, but their truth or what they have to say is not necessarily yours to hold. I just think it's going to help you uh, kind of make it clear cut. This is the end. This is my new beginning. I'm leaving this person behind. So a lot of stuff is coming up for you. I would say in the next, again, 11 days after listening to this reading, be aware of 1s and 1111. Uh, I'm going to pick an oracle card from the Moon Witch oracle deck, and I'm going to probably read the booklet because I've been loving reading the booklet for this specific deck. Um, Taurus. Taurus. Illusion. I'm hearing illusions. There's something that you don't know. You don't have the answers around right now. Again, it's a person, Taurus. It's in the unknown. It's a little scary, to be honest. Again, the word spell keeps coming up. And I think you're about to finally break free from that. What do we have here? No. Sleep on it. Okay, so I'm, you know, I'm not going to read the booklet for this one. So this is about communication. When you receive an invitation, when you receive communication from, again, whatever, whoever has been holding you back, whoever kept you kind of prisoner of the past, um, the deceptive prison, a prison of deception is what I'm hearing. What? And it feels like very watery energy. The deception prison, and it's very watery. What the heck am I sensing right now? I would say sleep on it. Again, notice how you get triggered. Notice which part of your body is activated. And I think that... This is kind of the final step for you, the final layer to clear out and release before actually feeling like things are changing. There's still this one piece that's kind of pulling you back into 2020. What? It's a very specific kind of a particular message here, but I really want to honor it. A part of me is like, this is too specific. No one's going to relate. And actually, my heart is saying you have to post this reading. It's important. No, you don't need this person. No, you don't owe them an explanation. And no, I don't think they're supposed to come in this new season of your life, this new chapter. I think that this is the final clearing before you have the fresh start. And maybe some of you are like, I already cleared out this person. Again, you cannot control how they are trying to manipulate the energy. And I think that you're about to find out. 
it might come in as a shock. It might be a little bit kind of deceptive. There is a, some sadness and some heaviness here. But when you are able to take the sword out and really start healing the wound correctly and profoundly, I think that everything changes for you. Your energy is going to change. And again, how everything has been blurry recently, that's going to kind of recalibrate for you. So much change, Taurus. I'm excited for us. I'm excited for you. I'm your biggest cheerleader. I'm always, you know rooting for the Taurus energy. I'm sending so much love, Taurus. Take care of yourself. Uh, if you need kind of a supportive card for the month of October, take the lover's card out of your tarot deck or find this picture on Pinterest or something. Put it on the background of your phone. And remember that the lover's card at the end of the day, yes, is a card of communication, so how do you reciprocate? How do you receive? How do you listen? But also it's the sacred mirror. It's a great reminder that all the beauty you see outside of yourself is a reflection of you. I'm sending so much love.